Welcome back, guys, to the This and Much More podcast. I'm Evelyn, and my co-host is... Rolly Vogues. And our special guest today is... Chris Anton. I run for tacos. Yes, yes. sir. And we're going to get into that. So, I'm so excited because I want to talk about food. Yeah. But real quick, we haven't recorded, if I'm being honest here, in like two weeks. So we are. I feel like we are kind of rusty, rusty a little bit. It feels a little weird, but we're well, back. Actually, we're back. No, we did record... You know, but we haven't dropped the last two weeks, right? But uh, yeah. obviously, guys, y'all won't understand because this is going to be out by the time. Uh, but anyways, we haven't recorded in two weeks. And the last week we did, but we just like trashed it because we yeah. felt very rusty. So yeah. So just to get started, like your name, right? I mean, well, first of all, people have seen you on our podcast before because of uh, at Post Houston Post event, Houston. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah and skeptic. so mm-hmm. yeah that was just like a little something about you but let's touch on everything else uh but your name i run for tacos like how did that come about yeah um, i feel like it's gonna like go pretty much how it went uh, yeah, yeah. That, was that many weeks ago but i run for tacos is basically just uh, an instagram name um running was always a big part of my life growing up um <clears> even <throat> into post when i after i'd already started college i started working at a run store fleet feet yeah and um running was just like i said a big part of my life and i wanted to create an instagram name that captivated like what i did in running and then also a little bit about me or my background or my culture and tacos just kind of made sense at that time people were just like doing like running i run for burgers i run for nachos i run for donuts and i was like no better way to connect that to myself and like who i am as a latino then um, I run for tacos. Like, who doesn't love tacos? Can't think of a more like beautiful thing. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Even Milo loves tacos. Yeah. 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 So where'd you grow up? Like, let's let's go back. Yeah. So uh, where like where are you from? Houston yeah. originally. I grew up in the southeast of Houston. So this is like home base right here. So mm. I grew up off of Ogalvisner Road and Broadway over there, mm-hmm. um, right behind Milby High School. So. Oh, that's where his parents. Yeah, that's where they are. They now. bought a ranch over there. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's that's where Milo is at right now. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right down the street. Um, so yeah, I grew up in Southeast Houston, um, and I was in Houston most of my life until I moved to Austin um, okay. to do what I'm doing now. Mm. Okay, so that's where you're at now. Yeah. I'm so if you don't mind me, you don't have to answer, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah. how old are you? I am 31. You're 31. Okay. Oh, yeah, you're cool, just like, cool. and you're older than him. We're, we're, yeah, yeah. we're right here, man. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So you're class 20. 20... 2010. 2010. Yeah, we used to call it dime time or like dime time. <laughs> it was so did so you corny. graduate from milby then i didn't I, ha- I have a lot of good friends that went to milby and mm. um we, ha- we hung out after my my time in high school um but i went to debakey high school it's like in the medical center yeah it was like a magnet school and um met a lot of good people there as well um but yeah we had a, a little corny thing called like dime time that was one of the schools i was gonna <laughs> apply to really? but i ended up going to east early East Early is a great school, too. Yeah. Um, I met my, my boy, Mark Mark Martinez. Well, I didn't meet him there, but I know he went to East Early. Is he um, the same? Is that Mark, the, like, a class older over you? No. Nah, he, nah. he's, uh, he's around my age. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, I he's the one that is always that wears, like, the high socks. Yeah. Mark City? That's yeah, him. that's yeah, him. He plays a lot of cards, um, poker. Yeah. Or, mm. I don't know, if it's Texas Hold'em, whatever it is. It's, he plays cards, and he, he he does it at a high level now. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, he was uh, the class above me. His class was the first class to go there, yeah. and then I went in. Yeah. It was like That's 100 right. students per class, so. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, we probably know a lot of people in common from, from back then, because I know a lot of people that went to East Early. And y'all, like, graduated, and y'all, y'all came out with, like, an associates and stuff. Yeah, I was yeah. always like, man, I wish I would have worked there. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I gotta get through these like pre-reacts. yeah, but not, but now every school is doing that pretty much. You yeah, know? even South <clears throat> Soho's doing it too. Soho's doing wow. it too. Yeah, Dang. that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like Chavez. I don't know if they are, but like Soho, I think they are. Mm-hmm. A lot of Pasadena high schools are doing it. Like okay. Betito's in in a school where he's gonna graduate with his associates. Really? Yeah. What, what grade is he in? Uh, junior or sophomore? Damn, junior crazy. probably. But I dang, I didn't know you were from here. Like yeah, I'm from here. From here. That's pretty dope. And yeah. where did you meet your girlfriend? I met her. Um, I know we're like fast forwarding and the stuff we're gonna talk about. No, yeah. But I met her while I was working with um, with Saucony actually, um, at one of my accounts in San Antonio. She was working there at the, one of the running stores, and met her there. And then the rest is history. Uh, she moved to Austin with me a little later on from then, and um, been together for like three and a half years. Dang. So. And it, are you living in Austin right now? Yeah, we live in like the north side of Austin. Mm, how like, do you like? It's very different Austin and Houston, right? Yeah, it's different. Uh, a little bit more like 
I guess confined, um, but it's like densely populated over there. Houston's huge, but it's a little bit more spread out with all the suburbs and mm-hmm. um, the growing areas out here like Sugarland and um, Friendswood and Bay Area to the Woodlands, Katy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Austin, it feels like everything's a little bit closer together and even more like tightly packed. So it's always traffic. It feels yeah. like Houston, but worse sometimes with the traffic. Really? Um, a little bit younger mm-hmm. demographic too mm-hmm. over there, but um, a lot of outdoors, a lot of that nightlife vibe with like yeah. 6th Street and West 6th and East Side. Um, there's a good food scene over there. A lot of the food truck. Mm-hmm. Um, who do you, I was gonna say, who do you think has like the better food? That one's tough. Cause <laughs> I have I have favorites over there now from being there the last four or so years, and then coming back here, like there's still the, those staples. I feel like um, Houston has more of the variety, especially because mm-hmm. yeah. it's like a melting pot here with all yeah. the cultures. Like you got Chinatown, and you got the the body over here, um, and just a little bit of everything in between. So I'll say I'll say Houston in the long run. Yeah. But okay. I do I, I do have some some good people who make food over there in Austin that I gotta stand behind as well. Um, but yeah, good food, good nightlife, good outdoors because there's a lot of trails and you can be out in the water. Yeah. Over there, um, it's a little bit closer to where you are. Mm-hmm. You don't have to drive down to Galveston or Clear Lake to get in the water. Yeah. Um, so I like it. Oh, that's pretty cool. So like, yeah. put us on to like, uh, what are your favorite food spots over here? Like that we might not know yeah. of. I don't know. So whenever I come over here. And I haven't been over here in like a few weeks or even a month or two. I usually like to stop by, uh, um, see my boy um, Isaac at Tacos Bomberos. It started off as like a pop-up and he was popping up at like Poison Girl on uh, Westheimer. And he would be at Satellite Bar on on Harrisburg. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now he has a good spot at Holler Brewery. Wait, on Harrisburg? Is it the one right in front of... uh... I think it closed down, but it was across from, you know that where that um, auto zone is? Off of Harrisburg and Yeah, it's right in front of Alteño. Is that... It's right I mean, next, they, that's like the little... By Waterburger? Yeah, right next to Waterburger. Oh, my God. Like really? The, across the... Because I know that that spot always changes to, like, yeah. different... So that was the spot. They would have a lot of, like, um, groups pop up there. It was, like, a little dive bar, but he'd pop up back there with a tent and make some, like, tacos, quesadillas, mm. tortas. Mm. Um, what I like about Isaac, though, and now, like I was saying, he's at um, Holler Brewery. He has a nice little um, spot there that... Gets a lot of his people coming out a good following. What I like about him is he stays true to, like, how he learned to cook. And he learned from his abuela. Just, like, a lot of us, like, we learn good food from our, our parents, our grandparents. And he just kind of keeps it true to the ingredients. Like, he gets a good flour tortilla. He just keeps it simple, like some flank steak. And then he wor- he worries about, like, the, the sauces and stuff afterwards. So he does, like, a Valentina crema sauce. Um, he has, like, a really good salsa verde. And then he just puts some cilantro, cebolla, and then it's yeah. that's it. Then he does some quesadillas. He does some tortas sometime. And then he'll do like bombero dogs and do it up with some What's bacon. a bombero dog? It's basically like like a Mexican hot dog. Oh, okay, okay. But, like, but he his way with his like his style of cooking. Oh, I see. Um, and he'll do those like occasionally like feature some of those cool items. Mm. But I like I like um, tacos bomberos with Isaac. And then I like um, another good food truck I like going to is... Um, Taco Madre here on Edgebrook. Okay, it yeah, was a green yeah. truck. Now, I mean, they I drive by it and they have a whole freaking drive through. I know. <laughs> and then. Um, and they accept cards. They accept cards now? <laughs> yeah. That's huge. That's big. And um, I go to the one still in Denver Harbor over there on I 10 still. Mm. Uh, that's another location. Uh, but another good taco truck is um, Trompo. Um, Saul, he owns it. He's He's been around. He has a lot of cool Houston branding like um, Trompo World. And I know he was pop- popped up over there off of Patton and 45 North. Mm-hmm. Um, but he, he's done a lot in the community and they do a lot of good um, pastor on, uh, on their trompo. So mm. big fan of those three. And um, I, I know a really cool place I just popped up. Y'all got to try called Burger Bodega or Bodega Burger, one of the two. Mm-hmm. But uh, on w- Washington. Mm. And they make some smash burgers and some chopped cheese. Super good stuff. <laughs> Super good stuff. Like, I'm, all, I'm all about the, like, the greasiest, meatiest, cheesiest hype beast food that people are going to wait in line for yeah and just like feel like might feel like shit afterwards but yeah it's worth it yeah so you are ones to stand in line yes, to try something definitely um the other day they were doing like a pop-up because someone from new york was coming down and making like his special like bodega sandwich and they clo- closed it down sandwich they closed it down and the line was like wrapped around the entire block and i was like i gotta head to austin i'm not gonna wait two hours for this but if i didn't have anything to do i would have stayed in that line and waited who, for who it. was it do you know uh i should know um but i gotta i gotta get back to you on that isn't it that guy because there's this guy he's that a bodega does... guy but he actually has like 
the authentic bodega up in New York. Yeah, where like people like go and and I I don't know if it's the guy that that I seen on No Jumper. Um, Might have been. Damn, what's his name? But he, he has like these catchy phrases that he says. I don't know if that's him though. It was recently. It was like a couple weeks ago. Oh damn! I I don't follow him like that, but I mean, I'm gonna look it up after this. Yeah. Y'all gotta check it out though. I feel like it's one of those spots where y'all gotta take a Milo and like go get a good meal. Just don't get the the habaneros in your sandwich because they had the option of getting jalapenos or habaneros. And I was like, man, I've had some habanero chiles before, mm-hmm. and I got it, and it was literally sliced habaneros with the seeds and everything. Oh my! I couldn't God. even have a conversation nah, afterwards. That, yeah. I felt like it was like hot ones or something. Yeah, dang. Um, which would be really cool if y'all eventually like we got like, that some would tacos, be cool. Some salsa <laughs> and dip to see which ones and all that. <laughs> Down. Oh, we cool. we could have something like that under under the channel, where it's like ch- a challenge or something. You could. I could. I'd be dying. <laughs> I'd be. We did the one chip challenge one the, time. The Paki. Yeah. yeah. The Paki one. On yeah. with Erica and um, man, when I tell you my stomach was hurting after that, yeah. is an understatement because my stomach was hurting. But of course, yeah. I was drinking milk and water because I was so like, I was dying. And we split one, three ways. Yeah. So, yeah. but I had so. the bigger part. Gotcha. Yeah. And I was dying. That's crazy. But I need to push myself into like uh, trying more foods like that. Porque, mm-hmm. like, let's say Sunday. Sunday's the like the time that we're gonna go out and buy some food and stuff. And then I'm like, hey, where do we go? And we're she's basic. like, she's like looking up all these spots. And then we go through a whole list. And I'm just like, you know what? Let's, let's just go to Hooters. Let's just go to Hooters. Like, because <laughs> I don't know, bro. Like, I, I just feel like, because you know how you just mentioned like the the people that are running these businesses, you know? Yeah. And I do feel like. It's probably not the case, but I feel like if I'm going to go to a taco spot or whatever, like I, I kind of have to be in that crowd or something like that Definitely. and not just show up as a customer. Because I feel like if I show up as a customer, they're going to look at me like, who's this guy? No, but, I know I, that's not, I, but I know that's not the case. No, you know? I feel like for me, it's more like I, I don't want to risk that I'm starving and I go and try something new and I don't like it. And then I ruin my appetite. That's what I'm always I'm a picky mm-hmm. eater. So. Yeah. that's what scares me have you ever had that where you're just like super hungry and you waited an hour for that one item and then you're just like you bite it and you're like damn that's trash yeah i um one good idea or one good um example of that was i was at um in la at complex con and there was this food truck that i've been wanting to try and i i saw him pop up over the years it was called all flavor no grease mm-hmm. and um he was just like making like quesadillas. A big guy was making quesadillas in like um, a Crenshaw over there in, in, in the LA area. Yeah. Um, and he would make like shrimp quesadillas, ch- chicken quesadillas, and he just had like all the people there around him, and he was doing it himself. And I was like, man, I'm so excited. He's gonna be at ComplexCon making food. Mm-hmm. And I mean, fast forward to when that was, he already had a food truck with his face on it, all painted on there, and it was a whole different operation. Like at that point, he wasn't even cooking the food. Mm. So you kind of have that disconnect like he's checking me out on the like the card reader um they were selling like 40 dollar burritos if you got chicken and beef mixed and i was like, all right i'm gonna do the, the mix so i can like go all in on this and i'll order it and like he said it was pretty trash and i was like man like i waited all this time to finally try this guy's food and it was like that but as he grew and as he got big kind of took away from that like authentic authentic, authentic. Yeah. yeah that's that, what i was gonna like, say attracted me to the tim in the yeah. first place so, yeah man um, have you tried primos here in houston yeah, I love that place, but they they closed down, right? Did they? They moved. Didn't or they, they they probably moved. Okay. Oh, yeah, because so they're not in they Pasadena anymore. I thought I think they're in. Do- Man, don't tell me they closed down. They were close to a uh, Minimade Park, like close to there. But I'd always come down here to Pasadena Boulevard. Yeah. And get those little like hot Cheeto sliders. Yeah, oh, so good. <laughs> but they're not. In, they're not over there anymore. Yeah. No, they they popped up at like a a bar um, across from like Minimade Park, and then I remember them saying like, "Hey, we're going away," but stay tuned but i haven't been i haven't been in tune so i gotta oh, check it out wow me neither i haven't really checked them out but yeah. now i am because i'm kind of craving those because i feel like those yeah. that's one of like uh, it popped up and i i would look at the pictures presentation is key too though yeah you know yeah. whenever you are like wanting to sell your food and whenever you're like a startup right and i remember i'm like man i want to try them i want to try them and when i did it was like a wow like them. this is good you know yeah yeah but definitely. this content is key with those places you know they yeah. the food f- speaks for itself but the amount that they put into their content like brings more people yeah all like over. have you been to the one right we always talk about it like the one right here in south houston next to soho it's like a little one and there's always a line is it trompo? The little, little taco taco place yeah is it next to michacana 
And on I, Michoacana is on this side, so it would be... On the side of the school. On the side, on the of, the side of the school. I know which one it is. My uh, my brother-in-law has been there, uh, and said, my sister and them go all the time, but I haven't been personally, so oh, i got to okay. check it out. And there's always a line. Really? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So yeah. I've been telling him, I, I want to go there. I think they do like dollar I tacos and stuff. So yeah, I but know. I found gotcha. them on TikTok. <clears throat> oh, I'm really? like, oh, they're pretty close, you know, so... Yeah. I'm getting a little more in tune with TikTok, getting more familiar with the platform, um... But it's one of those things where you can just get down, uh, go down a vortex, just like yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you gotta, you gotta be like, yeah. be able to like just hop off, like <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. Because if not, you're just there, and it's next thing you know, it's an hour, and you're like, oh shit, yeah. What was I doing with my life? <laughs> yeah, I like, I like TikTok. I, I feel like um, a lot of older people are just like, ah, that's for kids, you know. But nah, like there's a there's a lot of content creators on there. Yeah, uh, I like it just because it it is becoming the new um, search engine. Mm-hmm. right like yeah, i just search it up on there yeah i search up how, how they make fast food like i, I know how they make uh jack in the box tacos now oh for real yeah they just throw them in the, in the little grease and oh i know that i thought you meant like from scratch <laughs> no it's, it already comes with the meat like the ingredients like the chemicals they used to yeah make. that's <laughs> what i thought you were gonna <laughs> tell me like i mean come on i obviously they're gonna dip everything in grease yeah, somebody was like food. damn y'all just dip no they're like uh oh it didn't that one didn't get enough engine grease or whatever, and I'm just like, because mm-hmm. the grease was black, bro. I was like, speak. Speaking of those Jack in the Box tacos, like, um, getting in more back into tacos, like, I don't feel like I ever mm-hmm. like ever discriminated with tacos. Like, I consider a taco anything from that, or like a Taco Bell taco, all the way to what you can get at home to mm-hmm. something that uh, Michelin chef is making for you. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I don't discriminate. I like tacos in general as long as it doesn't taste. Okay, bad, I was gonna you know ask you. I mean? You know what tacos I do not like? Yeah. I think it's okay. Which one's the pink one? Is it Taco Bell or Taco Cabana? Taco the Cabana. taco Cabana, yeah. The pink box, the breakfast tacos. Yeah, they're, they're kind of. I don't bland, like. Right? <laughs> I do not. It's crazy because. I never had them from fast food like that. I I never really either. I didn't either until one time my boss pulled up. He's like, "Oh, I brought tacos." I'm like, "Oh, I'm just about to go down." And then <laughs> he, it was those. It was the pink box with yeah. the little aluminio, and it has the sticker of what it is. And mm-hmm. then I'm like, "Oh, I guess I'll get a chorizo one, you know, or a papa." I don't know what it was, and then I ate it. The tortilla was just like, mm. it was, yeah. I was like, ah, it what, ain't for me. What I can't stand for about those type of tacos and a lot of other breakfast tacos are when they're like 80% egg and like a little yeah. hand of chorizo or yeah. bacon or mm. potato. Like That's what turns me off about bacon tacos. It's the place that like meet it halfway or go like 60-40, like meat to, to, to egg, and then they put salsa and stuff on there. Mm. Yeah. You wouldn't like it, babe. The tortilla would taste it fake. Yeah. I he, feel like I can smell a fake tortilla. Yeah. He always yeah. tells me, oh, I can smell it. And I'm just like, oh, my God. Yeah. yeah that's like taco connoisseur right hey, there. But they, they, they might make less egg now since it's expensive. It might be 50-50 now. That's true. That is so They're true. They're like, nah, nah. We, we got to, you know, got to lower Eggs the... Eggs are the, becoming expensive. That's crazy. Yeah, I've been that seeing that shit, but... Man. Um, I wanted to ask, like, so let's get into, like what you actually do and and what you're known for you know so yeah talk a little about um about yourself your career and yourself and what you do definitely man so let's rewind a little bit back to when i was going to school i was studying kinesiology um went to utsa for a little bit came back home whether it was homesick or me just wanted to come back and like start making some money because i just wanted more money to spend i didn't have a car at the time so i wanted to get a car um just buy more stuff enjoy the the times when i was off of school mm-hmm. so it just came all right let me get a job um and i was like serving here and there i was at like kelly's country cooking oh, it's a lot Kelly's. of southeast businesses i was at papa's seafood mm-hmm. the olive garden on fuquay mm-hmm. and then um wait so you worked at the kelly's right here by broadway yeah yeah so you must have known like his friends um yeah they went to east early uh angel marcos I probably, I probably knew Angel. I'm, I'm, I'm just blanking on the last names. If, yeah. I, if I saw like last names in their faces, oh, okay, yeah. then you I'd would get know. them all. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of them sound familiar, I'm sure. Like, No disrespect if I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's been all these years. I'm 31 now, so I'm getting old. Um, but yeah, so I was I was working as a server. Um, I had always been in running since a very young age. So mm-hmm. I started working at a, a running store called Fleet Feet. There was like two stores in town, Luke's Locker and Fleet Feet. Um, started working there. Um, it only made sense because, like, man, you run in a lot of this gear already. Like, why don't you, like, learn more about it and be able to, like, sell it to runners who are coming in. Okay. You've been a runner for some years. Um, while I was in there, um, we'd work with a lot of the brands that we carried, right? Like, we had um, we had Brooks, we had Asics, um, Ho- Hoka, New Balance, um, On, a lot of the brands that are growing now. 
Um, and a lot of them had reps that they, they hire remotely to like manage a territory. So all the Texas based reps would come in, teach us how to sell their product, um, give us shoes, um, bring by donuts, food, basically like, like say like, Hey, I'm going to take care of you. Just sell our shoes. So mm-hmm. kind of like what I do now. Um, but ideally like I was always like really close to them cause I started doing our social media cause I was always like, man, we got to be better represented in the community. Like mm-hmm. why is our social media so inactive? Like that's when I was starting to get into Instagram and I was like, let me take pictures of shoes out in front of graffiti walls and in cool spots in town. So got more involved with that. And they saw me as this like individual who was going a little step ahead of what people in the, the store were doing, at least at like the, the regular level. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, hey man, we think you would be a good rep. Like, would you ever be interested in like being a rep in the industry? And a couple of reps that I was um, following along, they, they told me that they were gonna move on and if I was interested in taking their role. One in particular got me in um, in, in Wasakani. Um, worked with Wasakani for uh, some years. Grew a lot of experience in that role, traveling around. Y- y'all asked me um, if I travel for work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, travel f- from Texas, um, covered Louisiana and Oklahoma as well. So, I was basically covering that territory, going into these running stores and doing that same thing that those reps were doing for me when I was in the store. Um, and uh, did that for some years, built a lot of experience, um, networked a lot, um, built some community around the product and the running space. Um, and then just recently, um, started working for ASICS. So I got got an opportunity mm-hmm. to work for a brand like ASICS, a little bit more of a global brand. Um, and uh, it's been a good first two months, been riding it out, been a lot of highs already. Can't yeah. really say there's yeah. been any lows. So I'm I think really, you just really started with them this year then. Mm-hmm. Beginning of the year. Um, and as you've seen, like there's been a lot of advent- like adventurous stuff that have happened from me being brought down at orientation, going to Boston, trying some cool food out there. And then we've done a lot of cool stuff for you, like Houston Marathon, Austin Marathon, and just continuing to like push the the A6 like mantra out there to the people that I meet. Yeah. Whether it be you guys or people in the run space, like I don't just kind of look at like runners as like a, a target for, yeah, that for getting was, the brand too. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what, what made you think like outside the box? Because if you think about it, you thinking, because they're technically like running shoes, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. what made you feel like, okay, let me look outside, think outside the box and say, okay, let me get somebody else that is not even a runner, but, you know. Yeah, I feel like as a as someone working for a brand, like I'm a rep and ideally I want to see people in all walks, all, all walks of life in, in our shoes, mm-hmm. ideally. Um, so whether they're a runner, that's like a given, like they're going to get in our shoes one way or another. They're going to see me out at an activation with, mm-hmm. the, with what I do. But it's um, people outside of that, like people that I grew up around, people um, in in the barber industry, um, um, literally in fitness, everybody needs shoes. Any anyone that's on their feet is complaining about, hey, my feet hurt. We're at a stage where yeah. like we're not working out that much. We're not doing anything to strengthen our feet. So what does that mean? Like our feet naturally are are sore whenever we're on them for so long. So yes. yeah. getting into comfortable shoes is a must, especially whenever we're wearing these like stylish, like flat, like minimal shoes. Whenever you put on a pair of like Asics or a good pair yeah. of running shoes, it's a it makes a world of difference. So yeah, um, your targets anyone that wants to be in com- comfortable shoes. It could be someone in the medical industry who's on their f- their feet for 10, 12 plus hours. Yeah. Um, someone who's a, a barber, hairstylist, um, a um, someone in the food industry who's cooking on their feet for long hours. Um, ideally, anyone in any industry. So yeah. Um, that's why my 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 bubble has to be like. A little bit more broad because yeah. we need to get more than just like runners into our shoes and do you feel like other reps see it like that or no um some of them do i guess uh, everyone has their um their scope and they have an idea what they want to do for their job and I'm, i've always been kind of ambitious ambitious in that sense and i've always seen things in a larger scale and wanted to appeal more to the masses and doing everything i can to grow the brand to that extent so, so how does that work like wait with that, let's just go on a bit so we can go deeper oh, okay, in. Okay. Let's go on a quick off. break. Yeah, mm-hmm. let's go on a quick break, real quick. All right, cool, cool, cool. And we are back. So, what was it that you had asked him? Oh, yeah, so off camera, um. I kind of wanted to go back a little bit uh, about, like, you being a rep at all, you know, because mm-hmm. um, I feel like when, well, for me, I always worked a labor job, 
I was always doing labor job and then doing like the graphic design on the side and all that. Yeah. And I would tell myself like, man, I want, I want to find a job where it's like, I don't know, different, you know. And I feel like you found that different job, like yeah. that being a rep. Like I would never yeah. think like, oh, let me sign up for a rep, because I feel like that opportunity kind of landed on your lap, right? You didn't it, actively look for that. No, I didn't. It was something that while I was working at the store, obviously my duties were to help out in the store, serve customers, um, get them in the right shoes, show them what we have at the store, close the shop. Um, take payment, sell shoes, what, mm-hmm. whatever. It was a, the shop. a regular retail job. Yeah, it's yeah. basically basically a retail job catered towards like the, the running industry, yeah. ideally. Um, but one day, um, there was a, like a Nike rep in the store, and he was showing um, the, the buyer some apparel. And he was like in there, and I was like, man. I, it was a little bit earlier in my time with Fleet Feet, and I was like, hey, how do I do what you're doing? Like, how do I get a job? like like you for for a brand like being a representative for a brand yeah and he basically just said like do what you're doing now like just keep doing what you're doing now and i didn't get it at the time i was like well how long is it gonna take me to do that <laughs> yeah. um and just eventually like the kind of the opportunities came like obviously i had to kind of grow in my role i had to see it more than just like all right like i'm doing this nine to five like what do i what do i want to do here like i want to make a bigger impact while i'm here i want to elevate our presence on social media i want to be a, a representative for this store in the community. Mm-hmm. I want to be out at our runs. I want to help plan them. I want to promote them collectively. So it's more like marketing, social media, but at the same time being in the store. I helped manage the store to a degree where I was doing like the, the back of the house stuff, like the, the ordering the shoes, the submitting credit memos, all that cool stuff. And then um, in the process, one of the, the reps that was using me as a, a point guy, because I was always at like, contact person for some of the reps that would come in Mm -hmm. he was like hey man like um have you ever thought about wanting to be a rep and uh sure enough i was like man i'd I'd love to and i uh, i applied to a few of the jobs i didn't feel like i was really ready for the the interview process okay like i hadn't um i hadn't graduated like i i had i didn't have a degree so i didn't feel really qualified I, i feel like um i wasn't really ready in those first couple of times so and then the degree you mean which one just like uh, your, your basic associates? bachelor's degree. Yeah. Or no, bachelor's? Yeah, for a, for a bachelor's degree. So I felt like underqualified for a role like that. Yeah. Um, so one of the guys, he um, he reached out to me. He was like, hey, you want to get into the industry whatnot? And I said, hey, I'd love to. So I applied to a few of those roles. Then I, after several months after the, the second time I didn't get it, mm-hmm. I was like, um, all right, let me go in knowing a little bit more about what they're going to ask me, a little bit more confident in what I, what I have to answer and um, the experience that I built so far, and uh, the third time was the charm, and I got into the, the running industry with uh, with Saucony at the time in like 2019, mm. and um, yeah. Just so like, that that didn't kind of like deter you like away like, not getting in the first two times. It was it, it's discouraging whenever you you get to a point where like these people like express interest in in hiring you, mm-hmm. and they move you along the line. And you get so close and then they pick someone over you for one reason or the other. Yeah. Regardless of how you feel, like you're like you're player one, but like other people don't see it that way because they're not yeah. they're not in your story. Um, so it's a little It sucks, right? Like it's it's a it's a, a setback for a little bit. But then yeah. you, you let a couple months go by and then you kinda gotta give it a try again and then come at it with a little bit more more fire. I think every time in these processes I always envision myself working for these companies and doing that role that I was applying for Mm -hmm. and it just kept me like very excited about it and that's ultimately like the the passion and the the drive that that got me to like knock it out the park I feel like the third time yeah um dang I feel like I I've gotten discouraged right yeah like whenever I don't get the job but I mean it's not like a job like that where it's like you can reapply and Mm -hmm. you know but um it's good that you kept going though because so no job is like that you can't like reapply well his job would be like reps is different roles you know and there's multiple openings maybe for yeah. that specific job mm. the apply the jobs that i'll apply for is like executive assistant okay, so it's so like it, just what's one taken? yeah yeah okay yeah. I gotcha, I gotcha. Mm-hmm, like that man um so then going back to like doing the rep work um how does a brand like work with you on that so it's like they tell you like hey you have so many like things that you can do or these are the people you have to reach out to or it's like they tell you like hey do your thing and yeah. come back with us with results or how does that work like <laughs> we have so we have the way it's structured so 
there's a lot of these, uh, we call them tech reps or uh, field reps out in the field. Like I was saying, they, they manage certain <clears throat> regions. Mm -hmm. So I cover like Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana. Uh, we, there's a couple of reps out in California. We're pretty much in these zones. And we have someone who manages the team um, and does a good job um, checking in with us. We have weekly one-on-ones. We have team calls where we go over what needs to be done. Uh, we know what, what stores carry our products, so we're in there doing what we need to to kind of hit that message home and, and get our products sold through and do our jobs. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's very structured, but at the same time, there's a lot of time to like manage your own schedule and do things at your own pace, and there's a lot of like freedom in that sense. Okay, so since it's a remote job technically, mm -hmm. like um, how does the pay work? Is it a salary job um, yes. or is it a commission based? So it's it's a salary job. Oh, okay. And, uh, and this like field marketing role is a salary job. Um, and yeah, everything else. Yeah, because it, it's crazy how a lot of stuff. I mean, I'm assuming the rep job was always like a remote job, right? Mm -hmm. But after COVID, a lot of jobs did. During COVID, a lot of jobs became remote, you know? Exactly. Yeah, it became a lot like that, especially in Austin. There's a lot of like, tech companies. And during um, during COVID, everyone was working from home, it felt like. Even mm -hmm. even down here, I guess I'm just saying. Yeah, awesome. down here mm -hmm. too. Even like at schools, like because mm -hmm. I do subbing and I would sub from home, while working for an attorney. So I'd have like the class right <laughs> here crazy. and doing my to do yeah. list over here. I remember all those like social media videos of kids like not paying attention or doing something oh crazy my God, while they're yes. in school. Uh, so yeah. So or literally sometimes they had. I remember like it was like an eighth grade class and they had to have they have to have their cameras on right whenever it was yeah. COVID time. And a lot of them would just, like, put it up facing the fan. And yeah. I'd be like, oh, my. I wouldn't even trip because I'm just like, I mean, I wouldn't want to show my face either, right? So it's like, yeah. it don't even matter, like, yeah. as yeah. long as they do their work. But, I mean, I was just subbing for the teacher for that one I mean, period. I feel like it was the first time that something like that happened. And then yeah. in, in this modern era, I mean, you know. Do you so feel like it affected you, <clears throat> COVID? Because you started in 2019 and then COVID hit 2020. Yeah, it felt like it affected a lot of people in, in various industries and in the running space. Uh, at the time, I was like furloughed, and a lot of the team that I was with was like furloughed, which was like a temporary, like, hey, like we're gonna put you off to the side. I mean, we're all like on on unemployment here and there for that period of months. Yeah. Um, but it, it was a weird time. Um, we made the most of it. That's after I had already met my girlfriend, so we had a lot of time to like, hang out and like mm -hmm. date at that time. Uh, even though we weren't supposed to be seeing each other because of the because of COVID because of COVID, he broke the rules, guys. <laughs> I did. I was one of the, I was one of them who broke the rules. So he was out at the bar. <laughs> I was. Austin was like. Oh, he said I was. <laughs> Austin was popping off at the time. At least for like patios and like outdoor dining yeah. and stuff. Everyone was like open to outdoors. So I was yeah. out there. We. That was most of our dating was in 2020. That, that's how we mm, really got to know yeah. each other. So, mm. I mean, challenging times, but also. A significant time in um, my personal life with the, the relationship mm -hmm. I have going yeah. on. But that's um, pretty cool, though. Because, I mean, well, not that you broke the rules, right? But <laughs> no, yeah. The, Cause, cause that, you here, time, fucking... that you had time to yeah. do that. Because... I don't condone that behavior. Yeah. <laughs> that's Chilos right there. <laughs> Dude, like right here, Chilos, like yeah. during COVID, you know how they would like 25% of the restaurant could be like, that was the capacity of it. Yeah. Man, it was full full on blast like 200% capacity yeah. yeah it's like the man, show was blasting we always talk about that man they probably gonna be like <laughs> I just got reminded of what Chilos was I, I remember those mambo seafood I remember all like the wings and more and the Bayou City wings and stuff and uh, then wings? I saw do you like wings Chilos. did you like wings and more no I never did I mean they were like the like the grilled wings but to me they never had enough like batter on them and I guess I've always been more of a fan of like a battered wing and like I was Hooters closer to Hooters but more so like if Grew up down here like y'all did, uh, Bayou City Wings. So the one right there off of Fuquay. It, it's probably changed. We just ate that yesterday. Oh, y'all did? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, that was one of my favorite back then. I don't know if it's changed, but... I don't think it's changed, like it. right? Nah. I, I still get the same. Yeah, the same we thing. still... Since 2010, we started... We started the lemon pepper, started, the hot lemon pepper. Nah, like I get just I get honey barbecue. Yeah, he gets honey barbecue. It's just like, I, I, I don't know. That's my yeah. go-to. We started dating in 2010, and that's when he introduced Dang. those to me. I was graduating <laughs> high school whenever y'all started dating. Yeah. It's been a long time. Yeah. Yeah, this is crazy. But um, I wanted to talk about as well, um, just like the running, like, yeah. you know, because I tried to get into it, you know. And then we had Mauricio on the podcast yeah. as oh, well. Oh, you and did. And you got the things, right? What things? That you were like hurting. The shin splints. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, because I mean, and then I was and, and I was running like with Jordans or I was running yeah. with like you know I, I didn't know anything. I mean, I knew like I knew like fly knits or whatever. Like is that yeah, what they're called? Like, like Nike, the Nike, Nike stuff. All that yeah. stuff. Um, but nothing ever like Asics or you know stuff like actual running shoes. Yeah, I didn't know that they were a thing. You know, so. yeah, it's all good, man. That's what. Fast forward, we're, we're here to enlighten you now. <laughs> yeah, honestly, the other shoes that you had gifted us, the yeah. and I got, like, man, I always would get comp. So, you got, I got the two pairs, like, the beige with mm -hmm. the pink stripe, I think, or, like, a, like a pinkish one. Yeah. And then the yellow ones. The yellow ones are my favorite because they're super comfy. Like, they're just... But those comfy. are the running ones, though. Yeah, those yeah, are the running, the running ones. ones. They're super, super comfortable. Just wait. Just wait. I got something for y'all. <laughs> we are talking about comfortable. We got something to show y'all. <laughs> and I feel like I, t I use those to, like, uh, work out now. Like, not th on my days that I don't hit legs. Yeah. Because I, I like to wear, like, my blazers or vans, like, where they're flat yeah, for like leg that's days. That's mostly what I see, like, on even, like, fitness influencers or whatnot. Like, they're not, they're not even working out in, like, an athletic shoe there. They're lifting in, in blazers. I feel like I see that all the time now. Sometimes in socks. Yeah. Well, yeah. isn't it squatting. supposed to be like when you're doing legs, a flat? Yeah. yeah. No more of a flat base. Yeah. So yeah. when I do upper body, I always take the the other ones. Like mm -hmm. just because I want to hit cardio and it's upper body. So I don't have to yeah. too, be too focused on like, you know, my feet, you know, yeah. so. Definitely That's not. true. But um, so what, what got you into that? Like uh, into running in general? Yeah. Running in general. You so, did that in high school? I did it since I was like seven. I was like a little kid. Like, how old is Milo? He's four and a half. Okay, well, a little bit older than him, basically. <laughs> so, um, my sister was in, in running. She did like half marathons, marathons. She was in that like Houston running scene um, before I was born. So, the story was my mom had me in a stroller at these races, and uh, one of my sister's coaches was like, hey, when are you going to get that boy into some running shoes? Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, that's a little joke now, but eventually, as as young as I can remember, or as, as far as I can remember, I started running at a younger age. And it was one of those things like you, your parents put you in different sports to see kind of mm -hmm. what, what sticks and what you, like, you vibe with. And if they're doing it right, I feel like they kind of leave it to you to like, make that choice yourself. Yeah. yeah. And they put me in a little bit of everything. I tried the basketball, but I, would, I didn't have like the hops and like the skills that some of my peers had. And then running was that thing that I did that a lot of the people around me, they didn't either have the endurance or they weren't trying to like do 5Ks and 10Ks. They were just running for like a warm up or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things that I did that I feel like kind of I stood out with. And for that reason, it made me feel more more confident in what I was doing. Yeah. And uh, I kind of just got obsessed with just doing the mileage because, again, like no one else was doing it at my age. Like seven years old running like half marathons or um, then eventually training, at a mar training for a marathon at 12 and 13. Um, nowadays, I feel like I see six-year-old kids running marathons but at the time it just felt like it was very much left to people in their like teens to like their 20s 30s and, yeah. and beyond but i, I enjoy doing it because a lot of, not a lot of people my age were doing so yeah um and i just was great at it i i, I think i think i was mostly great at just like the the endurance side of it mm -hmm. just being out there mm -hmm. and just running for a long period of time and then eventually i got into like training for like half marathons full marathons and they'd always shout me out on the school announcements and it like make me feel good so i just mm. kind of kept at it yeah and then sure enough like getting out of college getting that job at the store and then now being in the running industry and trying to get people of it's all skill sets all connected into the shoes, right it's yeah. like all inter interconnected i feel like that i run for tacos is just like a just myself entirely not just like the brand that i feel like i've created with it or um the running or the tacos are just like completely my who i am so so you no. eat tacos right after you finish a race or when i i think so you know i mean like i'd like to he's like ideally. that's the goal <laughs> yeah that is the goal like um truth be told like whenever i'm doing these races like you're burning so many calories out there you start craving like whatever it is like mm. later in these mm. runs even if it's like a six mile run a 13 mile run whatever it is like you're craving anything like sweet savory healthy whatever it is anything you can imagine like you, you get done with that that run and you're like all right let me go and yours is out. like tacos it's it's tacos hey, man. when is it not tacos it's, it's never not tacos man <laughs> it's it is not never not tacos honestly yeah, like, honestly. i love tacos there's too, many so not, there's too many knots in that in that phrase there never, <laughs> so, not never not tacos. Not ne the, the first time i ever saw somebody uh like run a marathon or whatever was mm -hmm. a substitute teacher at rooker he he had showed us like pictures he had to like look up the website of like the marathon he ran or whatever, and then he his picture was there, 
And he's like, I just ran a marathon, guys, you know. And I was just like, oh, yeah, shit. Dude, like, was a, he was wearing a little subtle flex. Yeah. yeah. On the yeah. students. Too good, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because he was like, he was a cool sub. Uh, he was a tall guy with glasses and stuff. And yeah. uh, he in the picture, he you know how they wear like the tight clothes, like aerodynamic, I guess, yeah. you know. <laughs> he That's was funny. wearing that you know he was all yeah you know i ran Wait, a marathon so then you uh <laughs> you you know mike right yeah oh my god mike De Leon mike. Is, yes. it was his birthday yesterday it was his birthday, was his birthday? happy birthday mike happy Man. birthday mike i'm about that. to text him today right yeah. now I'm gonna happy birthday him. mike <gasps> I didn't know it was his birthday. Bam. And you're always yeah. talking about him. I love Mike. He's so funny, man. He's, he's always he's cracking me up. He's a funny guy. I met a guy, um, or oh, I know a guy at um, Bear Performance. I was over there talking about some event stuff. And he's a videographer as well. And he was like, man, you know Mike? That's, that's my guy. I call him like every other day. He's so funny. And that's, uh, that's the one com- common denominator about Mike. It's just a he's funny guy. Funny. He makes people yeah. happy. Yeah. And he's, he's good at what he does. I feel like when we talked about like our favorite episodes, like he's just like on my top five. Because he's always like... <laughs> Even like on social media, because you gave it, you like, I guess, gifted him some shoes, right? Yeah, yeah. And he was stretching and he was like, oh, yeah, my boy. And then, <laughs> and then I think that's the day that they had prop. like, I think they, they broke into his car or something. Something crazy like that. Yeah. 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 And uh, he was like recording, but he was still in a good mood and stretching. And I'm yeah. just like, oh, my God. I'm like, dude, you're funny. <laughs> yeah. No, ideally, like, <clears throat> there's no shame to Mike. Mike has some wide feet. <laughs> some big feet <laughs> so I've always tried to get him in shoes that work for him and uh, he, the last ones he has he's like man these shoes make me so fast man so I'm, I'm, I'm glad we found something that works for him and he, it's gonna help him run his like half marathons and, and meet his running goals man I'm just yeah. glad yeah. That I'm able to be because a part of that journey because he's doing that now right and then yeah. I, I remember he said I took my shirt off because it was rubbing too much they were rubbing his nipples or something like that <laughs> That's why you wear the aerodynamic clothes. You have to wear it thin. It has to be a little bit more, com- like a little bit more compressed, so there's not a lot of friction going on. Yeah. Yeah. Am I tripping, or did you just run a marathon? I did a half marathon. A half marathon. Yeah, in okay. Austin, it was a little challenging um, because there's a lot of hills in Austin. So mm. like, you do ten, you're feeling good, and then the next three, as you're coming back into town, are like basically an incline. So it was challenging. I was out there walking this hill, and those. Excuse me. Yeah. Hundreds of people around me, um, running, running past me, running with me, um, and it was it was cool to see not only people like pushing through that pain that you were going through, yeah, but also just like being the best version of themselves that they could be, and uh, it makes me want to go back at it next year and just like be able to run up those last three instead of um, walking them, kind of break Wait, down the way I did. So how does it happen? Like, you, do you have to run it or you can just finish walking? You can finish however you want. It's just like, man, how much do I want to push myself? Like, how, how strong do I want to look Mentally, to all these like, peers and these right? spectators? And um, mm-hmm. me having, like, I've done quite a few half marathon marathons. Like, I've been there on the good days and I've had a, a bunch of bad days. But ideally, like, I like the days where I'm, like, start to finish yeah. breezing through it. And that was my goal, just to, like, look good out there. And yeah. It got the best of me, but I'll be back at it in LA um, next month, um, doing the half out there. So how, how how long is a half marathon? Like how? Um, thirteen thirteen point one miles. Oh shit, that's a lot. I oh, want like I've it's always, a few miles. Thirteen. I've miles. always wanted to try. Half. I always wanted to try it, but I feel like I've always had to train for it, and I yeah. don't know the proper training. Yeah. So how do you train for a marathon? Um. It's a lot of discipline, man. It's like every single day. No, I'm just kidding. Um, with training for a marathon, people usually like follow a schedule that someone gives them. I mean, you can get out every other day and like slowly ramp up your mileage. Um, but the I feel like the correct way to do it is following a training schedule. You can get them out there for free now. You can follow coaches and they'll make a schedule for you. There's like templates out there, like I said. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's making sure you get your your mileage in for that training season, right? Like training for a half marathon, ideally and this could be not the correct way to do it, but I feel like being able to run 10 miles consistently with the right stamina, you'll be able to, to run that full 13 on race day if you're comfortable with that 10. Yeah. In, in training in August and September heat, if you're training for the Houston Marathon, it's 30, 40 degrees. So if you only did 10, I feel like you can go that extra 13 mm-hmm. with all the work that you put in. Yeah, because in Houston, it's in. it just happened, right? It's like, in January. It's in January. Yeah. did that one too. It felt a little bit better than Austin, but it was it was fun as well. Um, so the weather you train in matters right i feel like it does um ideally runners like training in colder weather because it's not as the blistering humid heat that they're used to in august september but training in that humidity kind of builds your resilience for the training Mm. season 
And then the, the cold runs, like you might start in 30, 40 degree weather, but after a mile or two, you're, you're warmed up and you're like taking off all the jackets and gloves that you started with. So it's just mostly about getting your miles in throughout the week leading up to that race. Some people do four week training plans, some people even shorter. Other people start training a handful of months out, but they're making sure they're, they're diligent on like hammering out those miles. They do sometimes easier runs. Um, they mix it up with some speed workouts on the track, like where they're, they just hammering home those repeats yeah. or they go, they do some strength workouts with hills cause you want to build your speed. You want to build your strength and then you do your endurance, like longer runs on the weekend. Usually whenever you have time to get up at 6am and get a longer run when you're not working all day. Mm-hmm. Um, but that, that was the, the schedule that I would follow along when I was younger and I was training for these things. Yeah. Nowadays it's like run once or twice a week and then. When the half marathon comes, you just go out and run it. But I feel like I have that, like, I guess it's like muscle memory and just yeah, like, like experience. You're, you're like prepared and yeah. you know what to expect. Your body mm-hmm. already knows. Yeah, mentally I'm more prepared, so my body has to follow suit. And I'm not if I'm not in shape, then I'm, I know better. I'm gonna suffer. You know what I mean? So how long? How long is that? Like running a time wise? It depends um, on you, right? It, it depends on your pace. Like the the elites are running sometimes under under an hour for a half marathon. Um, running under Damn. I feel like two hours is. Uh, great half marathon time um and anything beyond that so i mean it all depends on your skill level and just being able to take down that 13.1 miles so what happens like if you're like the last person um then you cross that finish line with some some pride and just like put that medal on and embrace it they still give you a a medal accomplishment yep Huh. Everybody's probably gone, shit. That's <laughs> nah, nah. People stay out there. You got your friends, your family, you got the, the media, anyone out there at these races. It's uh, it's a huge ordeal and uh, it's a lot to celebrate. And then even so on the marathon side, you're talking 26.2 because it's double that. Um, and people finish anywhere from, you saw like some of the fastest guys in the world um, get close to breaking two. So that guy, Elliot Kipchoge, who actually broke two, two hours in the marathon, so shortly under um, two. And mm-hmm. then... Um, People all the way up to six, seven hours running the marathon. Six, Dang. seven yeah. hours. Mm-hmm. Oh You're out there. It's an adventure. It's a whole thing. Yeah. Uh, like that's crazy. Campaign. I've always wanted to do it. Like yeah. I have a friend that does it. Yare. She's, mm-hmm. She got into like the fitness and she started doing like more of the running. Mm-hmm. You know, and I've seen her do it. She t- sent me a message when we were in Mexico for a little and she's like, "Hey, come cheer me on. Like I'm gonna be doing." The marathon was in January, right? Yeah, it was in January, mid January. Was it like a Sunday? Yeah, Sunday. Yeah, and that's the weekend um, we were in Mexico. Oh. And I'm like, I'm in Mexico right now. If not, I would have gone like to cheer you on. You it's know? fun to see, y'all. If, if y'all are not like training and running the half marathon next year, maybe like this will encourage y'all like, hey, let's get some miles in. I would want no, to. No, I would she want to. No, I, I've been wanting to do it, but now I am going to look into getting like a template to maybe it, like still work out, but maybe maybe like add that into my... My, my workouts as in like maybe yeah. train as in like running, you know, or something. Just a little bit here and there. Like I, I think I told you the last time, just like a little one mile run. Sometimes whenever you're putting in miles, if you can just go out there and put in a mile, just nonstop, whatever pace you, you go. And sometimes we start off strong and we get caught up in like trying to look cool to the person seeing us like on the sidewalk or whatever. Um, but if we just calm down, slow our pace down, lower our arms, chill our legs a little bit you get back on track and then get get to do whatever mileage you need to, whether it's one, two, three, and just build up from there. And yeah. the just floor, no, no you, rush. what were you going to say? Uh, I, I feel like where I fuck up on that is that I, I run at the park Yeah. and then I was running in circles and I feel like... Mentally, uh, it's a little exhausting. Yeah, it's, I'm just like, damn, I'm just running in a circle and I have to like go like four four circles like to make a mile yeah and i'm just like it's just boring you know but then i see runners like on ig and they post like their their uh the route or yeah, route yeah. or whatever and i'm just like man there's this is cool like they're going places and i'm just fucking in circles you know so that's all you gotta do basically <clears throat> um i've never been a fan of race courses or even running around a track where you're doing like multiple miles on a track mm-hmm. or race courses that loop around like i'm all about let's do one course and finish start start and finish at one point i don't want to like loop and see where i started to get lapped or whatever it is um but ideally just getting out there there's a good app to use uh strava you can just download that um you don't even need like a garmin or whatever but just get that started you can listen to music simultaneously um just kind of go down a route just make sure you're just uh obeying traffic staying yeah. clear of getting hit and whatnot 
and just <laughs> you'll get that little cool Strava route. Just yeah. go wherever it takes you. That's pretty That's cool. cool. We should look but, into it. Yeah. Let's go on a quick break and we'll be right back. Okay. Cool. And we are back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I did want to touch on the relationship. I mean, obviously, we talked about uh, you and Kat, you know, how, how y'all met and everything. But yeah. I was going to ask, does she run with you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's a runner. She's a she, runner. She's a runner. She's a track she's star, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like, uh, we, uh, run, running's kind of like my thing. Uh, mm. It's like my thing, like, kind of do on, on free time, get workouts in here and there um cats cats run a lot before she's not the most into running right now um but yeah but she supports so that's what she matters su- she supports me she's out at the races she comes out to the halves the fools she's there I, it's like the, the highlight of my run is to be able to like pass by her give her a hug and a kiss and a high five get a little video i it's so funny because yeah. i i would snatch think... the water cup out her hand <laughs> <laughs> like in the videos right like yeah, yeah. people are just like I get so annoyed when I'm running by those people. And they're volunteers, right? Like, bless their hearts. But, like, sometimes I'm like, y'all see me? Like, I'm trying to get this one. But they're obviously looking at this whole flock of people running at them. Um, But I'm always, like, frustrated. Like, ah, And then I I drink, like, a quarter of it and I throw it at them. (laughs) Well, I I try to throw it on the ground away from them. But in the moment, I'm like, do they feel like I'm just, like, an, an arrogant motherfucker or something? Like... Because the way I, like, grabbed it from them. But, yeah, I'm thirsty. Because I'm you don't want to like, stop water, and like, get like, it. You just want to keep running and grab it, right? Yeah. That's um, what about the oranges? I saw one time, like, somebody <laughs> give, like, slices of oranges. People are out That's there crazy. with whatever to kind of, like, replenish what you're, what you're losing. Like, they're out there with um, electrolyte drinks, like Gatorade mm. and uh, Noon is another one. Um, and these are volunteers? Volunteers. There's people that just come out, like, because they want to see the runners. And they'll bring, like, banana slices and... Oh, um, orange, orange slices, or banana pieces, orange slices. But wouldn't um, that throw you off? Jello shots. They're, they're Jello races shots? like get crazy. They got like mile twenty at some races, and just different parts of the race. They have like beer um, towards the end of the race if you want to like. Have I was about beer. to ask that. Like, if... yeah, I don't feel like it's the best for you on the run. I feel like it just makes your stomach full, and ideally, you want something that kind of help you feel light, replenish those electrolytes yeah. versus. Um, making you full and more prone to like letting stuff out. You yeah. Because I feel like older, like my dad, like beer after work type shit instead of like a Gatorade. And I'm just like, why don't you drink yeah. water at least? You know? Says the one that you've drank beer after work sometimes. Because nah, sometimes it's, it hits a spot though. But like but I know it should be like, yeah. you know, yeah. electrolytes and shit. Sometimes like, you want to drink a beer with me? And I'm just like, no thanks. Nah, but that's and then he'll be super like, super rare though. Yeah, it, rare. it is rare. And then he'll be like, oh, I'll just drink by myself. So then I feel bad, and I'm just like, okay, I'll drink one with you, like you know, yeah. so you don't have to drink by yourself. Yeah, but it's just like something like <clears throat> for the moment, you know. I got you. So have you ever thought about like starting like a foodie page? Um, at first, like I didn't really have a direction for my page. I feel like one person once upon a time was like, man, like. What's this about like Chris's page? It doesn't really have like a direction. Like it just kind of like a bunch of like scattered stuff, and it's not meant to have like one solid theme. It's but, just um, you. It's just me, and there was a time where I was just posting food, like, and now I post a lot of it in my stories. Like y'all see whenever I have like a big burger, I yeah. love like stacking burgers up, and, like, just in your face with a flash. Um, but I don't know if I I don't want to go all in on the food page. Like I don't want to have stuff to call out. Maybe I can have like a little side page where I can take those pictures of food mm-hmm. a little more serious. Um, and shoot things a little more intentionally with a good, little good camera and give a little review here and there. Um, and I, I geek out about that stuff, so why not um, express it on a social page? So, yeah. Yeah. Or a little that platform. That'd be cool. Yeah. I think it would be nice, honestly. Because right now it's I run for tacos. I'm just trying to see how it would be the other way around. People call me out anytime I eat anything other than tacos, too. If I post a burger, they're like, that's not a taco. Like, I always get those people. Y'all know who y'all are. Y'all always <laughs> call me out for not eating a taco, but. Like I said earlier, I have it's a confession. All about the good stuff. I don't like burgers. You don't like burgers? Why not? You she like doesn't the like bread? the texture of the meat. He says uh, she don't like the bread. <laughs> the bread. <laughs> I'm like, what, what about it? Like, I don't like the. You don't like ground beef at all. I don't like eating ground beef. Okay. The texture of it is just like. Ugh. But you say it's because it breaks like, down. Huh? Yeah. Ground Sometimes turkey, it breaks down. Lamb, nothing, none of that. Like meatballs. No, I've never really had it. Well, I'll eat like lasagna. 
Okay. But I feel like it's so it has too much. That's where crazy because I, I feel like I feel like okay, a burger doesn't break down the way the meat is in a lasagna. Yeah, but I feel like the lasagna is covered up with cheese and way right. too much. There's a lot of there's a lot more going on. It's on just a, like on one a, layer, on a, literally like a, a thin pasta. layer of like everything and then it uh. smells like everything else but the burger i feel like okay i'll eat a burger king burger like a little one but yeah. i won't even finish it you you're know right, right. i'll bite it like three times and that's enough for me and, and that's not even that doesn't have a lot of that texture you're referring to i feel like if you make them at home or even like on the yeah grill, like you have a big thick yeah burger, at home i feel like you get, yeah you get a lot of that yeah. like the ones from mexico where he gets them they're like tortilla them <laughs> But right. they're good. <laughs> like a little smash burger. I feel like that's kind of like the the Freddy's or the, the Shake Shack or the, those kind of places. And then I don't like barbecue sauce. Oh, okay. So I feel like people use it a lot. They don't do No. Not on burgers. On barbecue, yeah, but maybe not burgers. Like they put mm-hmm. like the Lowry's or the any kind of seasoning. But not, yeah. not I, I mean, I, I've I've ate a few like barbecue burgers, but yeah, because they'll put the bacon and the, the cheese with the, the holes in it. Mm-hmm. And then I, I I like bacon. I was like, whatever. But I was never like a person to eat it. Yeah. But my sister cooked it for me for my birthday. And I just been craving it since then. Nonstop. So now I just. But I told her I'm going to get the bacon. Bacon in general? When's the last time you had bacon? So I hadn't had bacon in maybe like years. Because I would always uh, give it to him, right? So then yeah. my sister <laughs> cooked some for me. Shout out Maria. Um, on In December for my birthday. And she did like a breakfast Thing. just like traditional breakfast yeah Eggs, traditional bacon. breakfast and she it was so crispy <clears throat> so i was eating it and i'm like wow this tastes so good right and yeah. then since then like i'll go to the store and then our breakfast on the weekends is with bacon because i'm yeah. craving it all but the i tell time her like now. get the maple bacon that's, a, that's yeah a you good like shit. the maple i like i mean i, I like, like them both i like the regular savory bacon and i like a little bit so of sweetness. i bought the regular bacon and then i got the maple one you know me from a person that's coming back to eating bacon right Mm -hmm. i feel like the maple one is a little bit better you like that i feel me personally i don't like syrup like that but just that hint of like syrup and that i just think it's because i eat it for breakfast so it gives it that breakfast Mm -hmm. taste maybe not on a burger if i was a burger person right yeah do y'all like those uh like mcgriddles and mcdonald's because they have like the the syrup in the Mm -hmm. like the little pancake i just eat the pancakes see the pancakes yeah. from there yeah i get the gotcha. the breakfast pancakes you do I, get the i don't i don't get like the big breakfast no like the biscuit stuff don't you oh yeah Often. just the biggest oh, yeah, yeah just the, like the biscuits with the sausage and then the hot cakes yeah i'm like not like mcdonald's has the best pancakes bro he says that <laughs> i don't know any other fast food place that make good pancakes or pancakes at all water burger no, no I'm, I'm talking like oh, I, I guess i'm not i'm, there I'm there. talking over like ihop over denny's like dang Dang, he's hey, tripping. Those are big words. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, nah. <laughs> he looked at you like. I don't even. Oh. I don't. Honestly, I don't even like Denny's and, and I. I don't even go anymore. Um, but yeah, I mean McDonald's flat. Okay, yeah, so do you <laughs> do you eat like? Okay, I you know a lot of spots. Do you have a donut spot here in Houston that you can be like, hey, this is a good spot? Mm. The donut scene is always like. Shipley's. Yeah, Shipley's. Uh, the original. People in Houston are always gonna be like. Nah, it's, it's, it's Shipley's, Shipley's like, yeah. A Krispy Kreme is. Nah. They do the little the red the red sign. And you go and you get them fresh, but it's kind of they're kind of thin and like airy. Mm. And uh, I feel like Shipley's has always been a little bit more like complete. Yeah. Yeah. And the, and yeah. the texture, the taste. Because I want to um, take my son. He's yeah, like a better. big donut hole fan. My son. Yeah. And um, even sometimes <laughs> when they don't have regular donut holes, he'll be like, "Okay, the chocolate ones are fine. Like yeah. he'll eat the chocolate ones, right?" Yeah. And then. But there's this restaurant here in Houston. It's like in Pearland and 288. And it has like, it's like a donut, but it's donut holes. Yeah, that's the name of the, the place or what? No, I, I forgot the I name. Know. It almost looks like a, a baby chewing toy. It's like munchy something. Okay. Yeah. You know those baby chewing toys? The ones yeah. that, it's a ring, but it's like little bolitas. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. They're shaped like that, but they're long. They're donuts though? Yeah. And okay. yeah. the donut think, holes are connected to each other so they I think make I've seen something donut. like that like in like um, Bel Air like a, a spot like in, in Chinatown they have uh-huh. like a really un- unique style of donut it's kind of I don't know if it's like what's that one uh, voodoo donut or oh the, I've, I've tried like a few from there and they have like very like different flavors I they think go, that's why they're known for it's almost like the torchy tacos of, of donuts, donuts yeah 
they go above and beyond like trying to create like <clears throat> everything you can dream of with a donut right like they do mm-hmm. the, like the, the captain crunch on a donut and the all, this all the cereals stuff. and stuff yeah, yeah and they're they're big in austin and i know they have that one on washington here in town but yeah <laughs> What They're about just don't have the best donuts in, in H Town? You know it is Shipley's in the, to the southern people. Right? Yeah, it is Shipley's. Oh, these mochi nut. Oh yeah, mochi, mochi. They're like that, like. Let me see. Oh, okay. Those look good. <laughs> Little segments. So I told Roland <laughs> that. Oh look, look at that. Oh okay, I love those. Those are probably like a, a cake. I like the the donut cakes. Those are my so, favorite. So yeah, so I want to take Milo because since he's like a big donut hole fan, I think he's gonna think, oh, these are donut donut mm-hmm. holes in a donut shape, right? Yeah. So I want to take him just to try them. He'll vibe with those for sure. Yeah, he did. Damn. He would. Yeah. I don't know why it just came across. You you mentioned cereal, and then they don't have cereal bars anymore, right? I feel like in the I, last couple of years, I might have like found some. You're talking about like the ones that have the little Which milk ones? in the middle? Yeah, the milk in the middle. Like the they had the I Lucky like Charms I've seen them. and the no, I don't Fruit Loops. I they had like Fruit I've Loops. Seen them. Yeah. Really? At HEB. I don't know. I'm just like. You gotta, I, you gotta pull up the app right now. <laughs> <laughs> Look and see if they got it. Yeah, I feel like I've seen them because I, I was like gonna I get some for Milo, but I got the little snack ones instead. Uh, yeah. But you don't go to HEB yeah. enough. Yeah. So. Just to touch on the merch, like, what made you want to start, like, merch, like? I don't know, man. Uh, ultimately, it was, like, I had the Instagram page, the platform. It was mostly, like, people I, I've networked with, right? Friends, family, people I met through work, the job. And I was like, man, like, wouldn't it be cool to have, like, for starters, a logo, right? Mm-hmm. Like, something to identify I run for tacos with a little bit more so than just pictures of me. Yeah. Uh, running or whatever. Um, and then... I reached out to you and I was like, Bill, can you, can you kind of bring this to life? And it was like a picture of me eating a taco Mm -hmm. and I kind of had an idea and it was, it's crazy how it's worked out with me and you. It's like, I bring the idea to you and then you, you work on it and then there's like one edit and then it just like comes to life after that one. Um, but it was like, you want, I wanted like the sarape or like design, like Mm -hmm. the multicolor, um, gradient. And then I wanted like, I run for tacos and words. And then you you decided to put a picture of me like leaning on the like <laughs> the taco um, sitting on the edge of the letters yeah yeah which is oh really yeah cool. it is the edge of the letters and yeah. that was like my first like logo per se and then um, my girlfriend actually had the idea of the the asteroid one and obviously being from Houston and there's a lot of cool asteroid memories and then mm-hmm. Travis Travis Scott making it a little bit more relevant in the recent years. Um, wanted to do that more of a grading. I run for tacos with the tacos over the top. So I had fun with that one. Made some shirts for the first time. Um, kind of reaching out, seeing what costs were going to be, who mm. to kind of print on them. Um, looking at whether it's going to be like heat pressed or like um, or direct to garment. Mm-hmm. Um, figuring out what the best um, the best quality, but also most like effective way would be. Um, and then getting some interest on social media, see who would buy them. And a lot of people supported that. And then recently, I was like, man, let me do something around like the 96 All-Star game. Mm-hmm. Um, then I had you st- um, start working on that logo for the 96 All-Star game. I run for tacos. I call it All-Star Tacos um, with the That's 22 for the year. Yeah. And it was kind of fun. I was going to wear that shirt today, but had this like really cool shirt from AIU Mas. Yes. I want to wear this, this hue. It's a nice shirt, um, guys. shirt is like a little felt here. It's very premium. I got the thick collar here. It's a good one. Um, is it thirty two dollars? You can pick it up. They're sold out right now, but they'll be restocked soon. Um, yeah, yeah hopefully no Saturday. Well, by the time y'all see this, it's gonna be gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah the restock and the sell through will happen by the time you see this. So. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, y'all. Um, but, oh, but yeah, but. man, just um, it was just fun to be able to kind of have people support the yeah. the brand after at one point not even envisioning that. Um, but thanks for for bringing that to life with your your skill set and yeah. i never thought that any of this stuff would be would be a possibility so yeah it's no, been fun well, i appreciate you coming to me bro but I, yeah it was cool it's cool and just to like be able to like build merch around what you do or stuff you love you know you don't yeah, yeah. you can wear other people's stuff but to have your own is like i feel like that's, you're that's making dope. it um <clears throat> like you yeah it's becoming like okay it's already you right but now you're making it a brand so it's like it's becoming like a thing it's bigger you know what i mean it's bigger now and i have people it's not a humble brag or anything but i have people randomly when i'm at like a running expo so like hey i run for tacos 
And instead of calling me Chris, I'm like, sometimes it doesn't even like hit me. I'm like, dang. That's yeah, crazy. I call you. I run. I am like, oh, I run for tacos. That's what yeah. I call you, <laughs> right? Yes, when yes, we yes. talk about you. I used to call you that, but now I just Chris. You yeah, because yeah. he's like, oh, get his number, and I'm yeah. like, oh, okay. And then he already had your number, and I'm just like, yeah, I don't know why. I, like, I was texting him the other day. <laughs> I just pop up on a group chat. I'm like, why did you need a separate ask for my number? I know. I was like, what? Then yeah. damn, no, it's because no, no. Here's the thing. It's because she's the one that like Starts books the group, books the people now. You know, I used to yeah. be on the. She's more on the on the studio 1017. Mm-hmm. Not not. I didn't much realize that it started. Yeah, we yeah. just we, we kind of just like threw it in. We're gonna talk about I it like so. on like Monday. That. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but yeah. So I don't. I'm not really in the DMs like that anymore. Uh. So she's the one talking to people. So, but we put like the if it's me responding, we'll put like dash Roly or yeah. dash Evelyn. That way people, because okay. you know, yeah. yeah. a lot of people were calling her bro, and they they were thinking it was <laughs> it was me. You know. So. Sure. I mean, and which so, I don't care, right? But yeah, so while I was at work, I told her I'm like, oh, start the group chat with Chris. You know. Uh, I'm like, oh, I don't have his number. Yeah. No, you I didn't. Say, mean, Oh, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get his number, yeah. but I like mentally, like I didn't even tell him. And then yeah. I got, I go to the page, and then I see the DM, and it wasn't open yet, but you had sent the number, so I was like, oh, I have his number. So yeah, I started it. When that happened, I was working, <clears throat> and then I was like, and in my head, I'm just like, why would I even ask for his number? Like he has the number, you know. But whatever, <laughs> I mean, we just yeah. looked like we didn't have communication at that. Time. Yeah, <laughs> straight up, straight up. I didn't think about it too much, y'all. I'm just um, glad to have the opportunity to be here. I know. I'm so Talk glad you came. I'm glad because yeah. we had you on the post Houston episode, and then I feel like now that you're here, we were actually able to like talk to you and get to know you more on a personal level. And yeah. it's crazy because I do think if we sit down, we probably have a lot of mutual friends. We do. I mean, Which just is crazy. talking about East Early and then talking a little bit about like Chavez. I brought up like some people I recognize from back in the day, like YJ and yeah. um, mm-hmm. Doe Man and, and people like that I was listening to and people I know were listening to um, like post high school and whatnot. Like it's a lot of people that grew up around here. Yeah. yeah Chavez, sure. Milby. Well, a lot of the people East. we do have are from down here. Yeah. It's crazy too because cool. of este, um, uh, I'm thinking Mauricio, mm-hmm. how he said he was like in contact with him too, which is it's pretty cool. Yeah, like, that's you know? cool. Yeah. Mauricio and just picked up some shoes. He was, um, he was. Um, I mean, he he said he's been running an Asics recently, and he reached out asking me for some advice on a pair of shoes. Um, kind of guided him to the right pair, and he's enjoying it. That's pretty so. dope. Yeah, he's he's pretty chill too. Speaking of Asics shoes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes yeah, honestly i didn't know what, at what point like to like you know <laughs> yeah. dive into that but i'm so excited yeah so speaking of asic shoes um speaking of mauricio is that mauricio right yeah mauricio I'm make sure i'm saying it right mauricio the, the same shoe that he ended up um getting and liking um i wanted to gift them the other day mm. so let me pull this out right here it's a little little thing i'm gonna do a little asmr a little <laughs> cardboard box that sounds nice. Right. It does. <laughs> so a little bit before I take this out here, A6 has been around a very long time, mm-hmm. making great running shoes for the greater community, right? Mm-hmm. Want to get good people in our shoes to enjoy the shoes for everything they are, the style of them, the comfort, the, um, the practicality, and just feeling good overall. The, the brand actually stands for a sound mind and a sound body um, in an acronym, um, but this is the new gel nimbus 25 so this is a shoe that has been 25 years in the making we've made one Shit. at least every year uh for a long time and this is the latest and greatest version um and i wanted to give you all a little color that y'all can kind of cross over as like a lifestyle shoe yeah to the times where you want to put some mileage in and train for that next half marathon that first yeah. half marathon yeah. for y'all uh, so that's the gel nimbus right there um really good comfortable shoe um, a lot it of looks cushion. super comfortable. No, these are super nice. Mm-hmm. Like the nice colorway on this. I, I I like the. I go for more for like the colorway. I haven't put these on yet, so. Yeah. But I know when I put them on. Yeah, guys, he's not paying us to say this. <laughs> <laughs> now this is all organic right here. Y'all. Yeah. Honestly, I really like the color because I'm a very neutral type of color girl. Yeah. You know. You got he's, the greens he, in here. Yeah. Got the tan, <laughs> the white. Like this is. No, this is the you know, studio. It does look comfortable because this is different. Like this yeah. right here. 
So the shoe, the Nimbus, like this. named mm-hmm. after a cloud there, is ideally meant to feel like you're on a cloud. So Is it like the Nimbus Like the flying cloud? Nimbus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> like we have a shoe called the Cumulus. We have a shoe called the, Nimb- the Nimbus. <laughs> Sorry, I want, I want to say this. So um, Mike, the other day, he was trying to shoe. It's called the Cumulus, right? Like Cumulus uh-huh. Clouds. Uh, and he was like, man, you gave me that shoe. It's called uh, the Gel Columbus. Or he said the Gel, the gel Cumbulus. Cumbulus. <laughs> And I was like, no, man, it's cumulus, bro. Um, But yeah, that's the Nimbus, man. That's that's our greatest and Uh, um, latest and greatest high cushion shoe. It has that really. That's why it has a 25. Yeah, that's the version Mm -hmm. of it, the 25. It has Mm -hmm. that really high platform um, build of a lot of trendy shoes out there currently. And yes, it's it's doing well out there. It just came out in February. And I feel like that's why the whole um, the girls or, you know, people that work out do the Nike blazers Mm -hmm. because of the. Like the high thing, you the know. Haircut there. Yeah. yeah. Damn, they're pretty. Would this dope. add Thank inches you. to my uh, vertical? It'll <laughs> add a little bit to your vertical and your height a little bit, like at least two inches in the height. I'm not mad at it. It'll push me over six feet there for sure. <laughs> Dang, I really like him. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, we really appreciate you, bro. We re- appreciate you coming through, gifting us these shoes, just being able to talk to you and learning more about everything you do talking um, about food yeah talking about food man. all my favorite Shit. things for sure and you know right now when we go off cameras you need to tell me like the like somewhere s- somebody that does the training or the templates for the running yeah if you know we'll of get, anybody we'll get y'all set up i'll get y'all taken because care i really do want to i really do want to like get into running i feel like yeah. right now i'm like okay i'm getting back into my working out you yeah. know doing yeah. it and i really want to do i want to try running like for sure but I don't want to do it wrong, where it's yeah. gonna discourage me, you know. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't ever think it'll be something you can do wrong. Ideally, like I feel like if you eventually get to the point where you can get out there and do three miles, and then whenever you feel like getting out there and doing three miles, or like I said, a mile or two, just building a sweat, um, working your body a little bit, feeling some of the impact on your your legs, your joints, your muscle groups. I feel like you're you're doing more than you would have running errands or yeah hanging out here at the house watching tiktoks or shows yeah. on yeah. tv or cooking whatever we're doing outside of that exercise um these are going to be a little bit more helpful with um kind of the impact yeah cushioning those blows a little bit more making things feel a little bit more transition to the forefoot mm. um make sure your heels locked in and your foot's locked in all together so there's not a lot of like variance there um so ideally we're trying to check all the boxes and give you a really comfortable experience with shoes like this that whenever you're doing that part it's a little bit easier yeah. on you. And what about like kid shoes? Do they do um do they do kid shoes or no? Mm-hmm. They yeah, do? Asics. We make uh, a ton of different kids models, um, in different styles. There is there's even casual stuff. Okay. Like the the old school joints, like mm-hmm. old school runners, like from the early two thousands are coming back as like street style shoes now mm-hmm. with the overlays yeah. and you've seen them. They just look like retro runners. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Asics makes a lot of them, especially oh. like the the Nimbus nine is ideally like a, an old silhouette that they're using for like collaborations mm. on the market with um brands all over the country um we have older silhouettes like um or like a little bit more sleek silhouettes like the gel light threes and the gel light fives that um big brands like kith do collabs with and mm. yeah. a little bit more well known on some of those yeah. those models and i'm wearing one today called the the ex89 that Oh, kind of evolved from like a basketball yeah, model. See, yeah. oh, that's um, nice. This is more of a low, low cut one, but they they make some. They're gonna make some highs down the road. Yeah. The reason I'm asking is because I know that me, if I want to go run or jog or something, then Milo is coming along. So I'm just like, I want to get him like in the right shoes, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And I just started. I just joined this mom group here, like on Instagram, which I think it's like why you know Esther YJ's wife. I don't. I don't. Well, she does. Uh, she's on the last row. Smack in the middle, in the bottom. Yeah, yeah her. Gotcha. So I, you know, I follow her, and her group of friends started this um, mom walk. Nice. Okay. So I think it's super cool because they're doing a mom walk on Saturday or Sunday mornings, so like yeah. that moms can go for a walk at the park with their kids. I think it's in downtown. That's cool. And that's um, cool. I was like, damn, that's pretty cool. Like I wanted to take Milo, you know, so he could. He's probably gonna be like the oldest kid, or maybe I don't know. And um, I was like, damn, that's perfect. Like it's just gonna work out, you know. So yeah, yeah I'm we'll excited. Get, we'll get Milo set up with some shoes. <laughs> Milo the Mijo. <laughs> um, y'all remember this is completely random. Y'all remember the little Mijos and the little 
20, the little quarter machines, those little toys. Yes. Mm-hmm. I just thought about that when I said my <laughs> <home>. <laughs> Completely random. Man, he was, he was mad because we went to a BCW to pick up some wings mm-hmm. uh, like a few weeks ago. And they had like the little machines I eat with the quarters and stuff. And I put some quarters in uh-huh. and he wanted some tattoos, you know. Yeah. You remember those like that you just stick on with water and then, you know. Man, that was nostalgic, bro. Yeah. And then I, I did the thing expecting to slide out, you know, and then nada. And I'm it like, fuck. Work. And I'm like, are right, you want a ball? And then like I, pr- I put him ahí and then we cranked it. Nothing. He was pissed. And I, I ran out of quarters. I didn't feel like complaining <laughs> about like the quarters. So I was just like, you know, it's all good. But, but no, yeah, it's just because <clears throat> I know that he'll be with me because he's either working and Milo's like, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. But with that being that. said, do you have any merch coming soon? Um, I got something I can hint at to okay. build some little traction, a little hint. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna be doing my first uh, running hats coming up. Mm. Oh. I got a I got a buddy of mine working on something kind of bold as far as like a standalone like tacos graphic. That um, looks a little bit more like statement, like what your your hat emblem says there. Um, and there's a brand called Ciele. Um, Ciele. Um, they're a Canadian brand. They make these really dope running hats, and they do some customizable options. And I'm gonna do like some custom. I run for tacos hats and sell them on my Instagram page. Oh, I'm, that's stuff, dope. Stuff I'm excited. That. Oh, yeah. He said yeah. I'm throwing a hand, and he said what it he was. Just said the whole deal. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, the the main thing is y'all don't know what color they're gonna be. I don't know yeah, what it's a hit, guys. So and then also this hit. this episode is probably not gonna come out for to March. A mo- like a month. In a month, yeah, a whole like month, in March. Yeah. So it, it gives you some time, you know. A little yeah. preview. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But overall, thank you so much for coming. It was yeah. nice, you thank know, so much to actually me. sitting down and talking to you. Yeah. Thank you for the shoes. I'm so excited to put them on. <laughs> and also, uh, so his stuff is gonna be in the in the description. All his uh, uh, like Instagram and all links and everything, um, as well. You guys, uh, by now you should know that we've already like transitioned to Studio 1017 as a YouTube channel. So make sure you. Go ahead and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on um, uh, TikTok. And that's it. Other than you know? that, thank you. Right, Appreciate you for joining us. Thank you all again for having me. Appreciate y'all. Yes, sir. That's <laughs> Peace. it. Peace. Peace.